right, so today we are going to be talking about how do you stay on top of the technology in information architecture. I'm just going to go over the ones that I think are very foundational. There are quite a few places that I regularly check, check once in a while, different people that I follow and I subscribe to things that they produce. Um, it, you really have to find what's going to work for you, but the resources I go over today are 100% good for anybody. Um, also, if you already are keeping up to date with this technology, let me know in the comments below. Do you use these? What do you use? I'm always trying to find new places to check out information. So with that, let's go check out the resources that I would suggest to start with if you are trying to keep up to speed on the technology in information architecture. So uh, I actually started doing this feed a very long time ago. I think this is one that might not be on the traditional path. Uh, so this is a website called Science Daily, and they have just a weird smattering of summaries of lots of different technology out in the world. And it's great because it just gives you these bite-sized summaries of really amazing research papers or projects or data sets. And you can decide whether you wanna dig into one of them more or if you just get what you want out of those summaries. So to sign up for those, you would go up here to subscribe and you can do newsletters or RSS feeds. I, I like emails better. And then I usually go to the top technology and strange and offbeat. So the reason that I do these two, also I do uh, top science is another one uh, because my discipline that I really focus on is STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, engineering specifically. I am um, very well versed in engineering discipline for knowledge graphs and, and taxonomies and information architecture in general. So if you are working in that space and you want some advice or you want to talk, hit me up because I love talking about it. And the reason I do Strange and Offbeat is because um, these are just the weird things that go on in the world. And I've learned a lot of things like cloaking technology <laughs> that comes from some slug in the Amazon. I mean, really cool stuff. And I do believe that Information architecture is really a creative process. You have to really think outside of the box on a lot of things. So I just use this as a stimulate, a stimulation for new ideas. You can also go in and get really detailed. Um, so what I would suggest is if there are specific types of technology or a specific domain or discipline that you are working in or wanna work in, these are the good ones to sign up for. I actually do daily. One of my regular routines, and you, if you read anything, successful people are known to read a lot, and I certainly read a lot. It is something that I would, I would recommend putting into your daily activities. So one of the things that I do is while I am making breakfast or coffee or whatever it is, morning routine, I have my phone and I'm just looking through these to see if there's anything that I am particularly interested in. And just to give you a really quick deep dive into what these look like, it will tell you the summary right here. So it's very quick and easy. You get a little bit more of a summary in here. And at the very end, they usually tell you where you would get more information on this topic. Moving on, this one is really specific to taxonomy, but I have found that Taxo Diary, while it doesn't have a ton of articles in it regularly, I do think it highlights a lot of new things that are going on in this, in this space, as well as jobs. I once saw a job posting that was at like my dream job come through in this uh, in this feed and I applied and uh, I did get it. <laughs> I was I was gonna work for the Fed and uh, it was it was an amazing opportunity but I'll, I'll tell that story next time as to why I did not accept their offer. Overall it's it's a pretty good one to check out. So this is KD Nuggets. I've mentioned this already, I think, at least once in one video, but you will continue to see it because I just think it's a fabulous resource. 
Uh, this is kind of running the gambit. There's things all over the place. As you can see, they do have jobs. They have different software, online events, a lot of different things. Um, so this is a place that I have a feed coming into my email. Again, in that morning routine, I'm constantly looking at those things. I'm also coming into here just see what's new and exciting uh, because they usually have some really good uh, and funny. I mean, they don't take themselves too, too seriously. I know that, you know, you'll see like a, a comic strip that's funny for data science. Um, I think overall, it's a really good application and gives you a lot of coverage on technology things in this space. All right, another one is Dataversity. As you can see, I mean, they've got some really cool articles already right here. And I usually go here to find things that are more high level. So this, so KD Nuggets will get into the very nitty gritty detail on technology, whereas data, Dataversity, some of their articles do that, but these ones are more like I would say stakeholder and executive level. So if you want to read about what other CEOs are doing at other companies and you want to point to somebody with a big name, somebody that works at Netflix or, or something so that your CEO is like, hmm, I should listen to that other important CEO. This is a good place to go and get quotes like that. Uh, they also do have technology trend reports similar to Gartner, but more, I guess, specific, although they do riff on the Gartner ones. This is also a great way to hear how higher level stakeholders talk about the concepts and how they make decisions on them. So if you're looking for fodder to uh, get stakeholders interested in what you're doing, this is a good one to check out. So now we're on Medium. They also have a page dedicated to data science. Again, this is a bunch of different things, but information architecture is certainly a big part of data science. I would say that they have upped their game in this discipline um, and the people that are writing for them. You will also see quite a few people and quite a few articles in some of my videos that are coming from media. The other thing is you can follow individual people. So if you start to see articles by the same people, see like this, um, that you think are just amazing, you can go ahead and follow that person. And it also gives you connections. See, this person is on LinkedIn, so go check them out. This one here is relatively new, and that is Google now allows you to search for data sets. You can go in here and just start to type something in. So you can see I type in ontology, and then it's got a bunch of different things here that you can check out. I'm sure there's more in here. In fact, I know there is because these results are different than what I just saw when I did a search previous. So let's look at the, the video game one. So this is going to help you understand what other people are doing in the data space. And these are the actual papers and data sets that are coming out of this research. So this is a good one to check out if you wanna play with the data, try to reproduce the research. Um, there's another tool called Protocols.io they also have um, research and the data sets. Okay, so this is Mendeley. This one is interesting. It kind of takes some time to build it up, but once it does, it's really worth it. So if you are doing research, you can upload all of those into Mendeley and it will save all of the metadata for you. And the reason this is so great is it will over time synthesize all of the research that you've looked at. Also, I will say that this is a fantastic repository for your own research. If you commonly find yourself, oh, what are all the articles that I have that are talking about folksonomies? Well, <laughs> that's gonna be a chore. Um, or you could have everything already stored into Mendeley, um, but you can also get at the full text in that tool. Here's why I'm telling you. So if you have a corpus of things, you can go ahead and upload it to Mendeley. Again, it's free, but this is why it's pretty cool. Once it synthesizes what your research is focused on, it will send to you a recommendation email for all this new research that's coming out that is similar to what your research is focused on. I will say that there have been times where I'm just, I'm shocked at how well this works. Okay, so speaking of feeds and people, so I would also say Google Scholar is a good pl place. If you, after you're going through some of these other resources, if you start to pick up on certain 
people. Uh, go into Google Scholar or to regular Google and set up uh, an alert, right? So you can create an alert on on that person, on that topic. So, so that is something that I also do. I have feeds that I set up almost 10 years ago when I first started in this, in this business. I still get feeds from them and I still look at them because they're still pertinent. I am searching on Horgeland. Don't know if I'm saying that right, but Berger Horgeland is one of the best people I would recommend reading for knowledge organization. So speaking of knowledge organization, sometimes you're going to come across journals. I'm, I'm not going to say just journals because I think that there are way more things out there in, in this space right now, like blogs and um, different vendor sites like Pool Party, but a more traditional way of looking at this, especially if you're still in school, because if you're not, journals are really expensive. So if you can find some of the online free ones, that's even better. But one that I do say, you know, I, I've, I've used this so often is the Journal of Knowledge Management. I do have a personal subscription to this one, but again, don't feel pressured to, to subscribe to this if you don't have access to it because there's many other ways to get it information. So the next one is LinkedIn. So I have said this a few times, but LinkedIn is incredibly useful. So this is why network is so important. There have been so many tips, so many tip offs of new technology, new methods, new things that are coming out that I only know about because I know the people that work at those companies that are in the know that are going to release it way before anybody else in the news is going to release it. So I regularly look at my LinkedIn feed to keep up to speed on what's the new stuff going on out there in the world. What are the new resources? Who are the new people, right? Um, so when I'm in here, I can find, okay, so here's some really cool um, Turing test information for graph drawing. Um, apparently there's a bunch of new books coming out, uh, Slack. So they're also talking about the tool sets that are out there. Um, here's a vendor, right? I can keep to, up to speed with vendors so you can follow different vendors. Um, let's see. So blockchain, right? If I don't know much about blockchain, but I have people in my community that are talking about it, I can learn through their experiences because they're experts and they are curating content and they are posting it. This goes for Twitter, ResearchGate, lots of other places where you can follow people. Um, there's a lot of different linked data communities on Slack. So this goes back into that network curating people. If you don't have the necessary connections to connect with somebody on any of these social media platforms, just follow them. Okay. So that was my list. If I missed any and you are keeping up to speed on things, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to go and check it out. How does this fit into finding a job in information architecture? I kind of saved this for the end since I think this this video is pertinent even if you have a job in information architecture. So one of the most common questions for interviews is how do you stay up to speed on technology? If you don't have an answer to that question, you're not going to uh, look as good for the job because if you're static and you're not hungry to learn, especially in technology, especially in information architecture, Machine learning is constantly changing. If you're not willing to put in the effort to stay on top of things, then some companies are not gonna to be too thrilled with that. So I hope this also helps with that question if you get it on your interview. And with that, next video up is going to be, how do you handle when HR says you have an interview? So with that, I thank you very much and catch you next time.